A wealthy woman named Margaret humiliates a black waitress named Jenny at a fine dining restaurant. Moments later, Margaret realizes too late who's behind her. The tables turn in ways she never expected, and the consequences of her arrogance unfold in shocking ways. Can she undo the damage, or has she already lost everything without even realizing it? Before we get into the story, comment below where in the world you are watching from today. And if you like this story, don't forget to subscribe. Margaret Whitmore strode through the gleaming halls of her company's headquarters, her heels clicking against the polished marble floor. She exuded confidence with every step, her tailored suit a testament to her impeccable taste and success. As the founder and CEO of Whitmore Enterprises, Margaret had spent years building her empire from the ground up. The morning had been filled with back-to-back -back meetings, each one a testament to her sharp business acumen. She had effortlessly navigated complex negotiations, leaving her colleagues in awe of her quick wit and unwavering determination. Now, as the sun began to dip low in the sky, Margaret was ready to unwind and savor the fruits of her labor. She made her way to her spacious corner office, pausing to admire the breathtaking view of the city skyline. A small smile played on her lips as she thought about how far she had come. From humble beginnings to the top of the corporate world, Margaret had always known she was destined for greatness. Settling into her plush leather chair, she picked up her phone and dialed her closest friends. Ladies, she purred, I think it's time for a little celebration. Meet me at La Belle Epoque in an hour. After exchanging pleasantries and confirming the plans, Margaret turned her attention to a few last-minute tasks. She signed off on important documents, her elegant signature a symbol of her authority. With everything in order, she gathered her belongings and headed out, nodding curtly to her assistant on the way. The drive to the restaurant was short thanks to her chauffeur's expert navigation of the bustling city streets. As they pulled up to the valet stand at La Belle Epoque, Margaret felt a sense of anticipation. This was one of the most exclusive restaurants in the city, and she was a valued patron. Stepping out of the car, she smoothed her skirt and took a deep breath of the crisp evening air. The maitre d' rushed to greet her, bowing slightly as he spoke. Ms. Whitmore, it's a pleasure to see you again. Your usual table is ready. Margaret nodded, a hint of a smile on her lips. Thank you, Charles. I'll be dining with friends this evening. As she was led to her table, Margaret couldn't help but feel a sense of pride. She had worked hard for this life of luxury, and she deserved every moment of it. The soft lighting of the restaurant cast a warm glow on her face, highlighting her polished appearance. Her friends arrived shortly after, each of them successful in their own right, but still in awe of Margaret's accomplishments. They exchanged air kisses and compliments before settling into their seats. So, Margaret, one of her friends began, What's the occasion? Another successful deal? Margaret leaned back in her chair, a self-assured smile playing on her lips. Does one need an occasion to enjoy the finer things in life? She replied, her tone light but tinged with pride. But if you must know, yes. Whitmore Enterprises just secured a partnership that will change the landscape of our industry. As the waiter approached to take their order, Margaret felt a familiar sense of satisfaction wash over her. This was the life she had always dreamed of, surrounded by luxury, respect, and success. Little did she know that this evening would mark the beginning of a journey that would challenge everything she thought she knew about herself and the world around her. As Margaret and her friends settled into their plush seats, a young woman in a crisp white shirt and black apron approached their table. Her name tag read, Jenny Caldwell and she wore a warm, genuine smile that reached her eyes. Good evening, ladies, Jenny said softly, her voice kind and professional. Welcome to La Belle Epoque. Is there anything specific you'd like this evening, or would you prefer to look at our menu first? Margaret glanced up at Jenny, her eyes narrowing slightly. She looked the young woman up and down, taking in her simple attire and humble demeanor. A smirk played on Margaret's lips as she spoke. Well, well. Margaret drawled, her tone dripping with condescension. Aren't you just the picture of servitude? Tell me, dear, is this really what you want to do with your life? Waiting on tables? 
Jenny's smile faltered for just a moment, but she quickly regained her composure. Actually, ma'am, I'm learning every aspect of the business. It's important to understand. Margaret cut her off with a wave of her hand. Oh, spare me the sob story. I'm sure you have big dreams of owning your own little cafe someday, don't you? How quaint. The other women at the table tittered, their laughter sharp and cruel. One of them chimed in. Oh, Margaret, you're too much. Can you imagine her trying to run a business? Another added. She'd probably serve water in paper cups and call it fine dining. Jenny stood there, her cheeks flushing slightly, but her posture remained straight and dignified. She took a deep breath and spoke again, her voice steady despite the unkind remarks. I understand, ma'am. Would you like a moment to look over the menu or shall I come back in a few minutes? Margaret waved her hand dismissively. Oh, just bring us a bottle of your most expensive champagne. At least try to make yourself useful. As Jenny nodded and turned to leave, Margaret called out, and do try not to trip over your own feet on the way back. More laughter erupted from the table, but Jenny didn't react. She simply walked away, her head held high, brushing off their cruel remarks with grace and dignity. Moments later, Margaret's imperious voice rang out across the restaurant. You there, waitress? She snapped her fingers, beckoning Jenny back to the table. Jenny approached with measured steps, her face a mask of professionalism. Yes, ma'am. How can I help you? Margaret leaned back in her chair, swirling her champagne glass. We've decided to add something to our order. I'll have the filet mignon, medium well, with a side of escargot. Jenny nodded, jotting down the order. Certainly, ma'am. However, I should mention that our escargot is actually an appetizer, not a side dish. Would you like it served before your main course? Margaret's eyes flashed dangerously. The table fell silent as she slowly set down her glass. Excuse me, she said, her voice low and threatening. Are you correcting me? Jenny's cheeks flushed, but she stood her ground. Not at all, ma'am. I just wanted to ensure you received your meal as you intended. Margaret's lips curled into a sneer. She stood up, towering over Jenny. Listen here, you little nobody, she hissed, loud enough for nearby tables to hear. I don't need some minimum wage server telling me how to order my food. Do you have any idea who I am? The other women at the table exchanged gleeful glances, clearly enjoying the spectacle. Jenny felt her heart racing, but she kept her voice steady. I apologize if I've offended you, ma'am. That wasn't my intention. But Margaret wasn't finished. She raised her voice even louder, drawing more attention. Your intention... Your intention should be to do your job without questioning your betters. Or is that too much for your simple mind to grasp? Jenny felt a lump forming in her throat, her eyes stinging with unshed tears. But she refused to let them fall. She stood straight, her voice barely wavering as she said, I understand, ma'am. I'll put in your order right away. Margaret scoffed. See that you do. And try not to mess it up this time though I suppose that might be asking too much of someone in your position. As Jenny turned to leave, she could hear Margaret and her friends laughing, their cruel words following her across the restaurant floor. Her cheeks burned with humiliation, but she kept her head high, refusing to let them see how deeply their words had cut. Jenny pushed through the kitchen doors, her composure finally cracking as she leaned against the cool metal countertop. She took a deep breath, trying to calm her racing heart. The kitchen bustled around her, but she felt oddly detached from it all. Marie, a kind-hearted server who had been with the restaurant for years, noticed Jenny's distress. She approached cautiously, concern etched on her face. Jenny, madam, are you all right? That woman out there? She's a real piece of work. Jenny managed a weak smile. I'm fine, Marie. Really? but Marie wasn't convinced. She placed a gentle hand on Jenny's shoulder. Let me take over that table for you, please. You shouldn't have to deal with that kind of treatment. For a moment, Jenny was tempted. The thought of facing Margaret again made her stomach churn. But then she straightened her shoulders, remembering who she was and what this restaurant meant to her family. Thanks, Marie, but I can handle it, Jenny said, her voice growing stronger. I need to learn to deal with all kinds of customers. 
even the difficult ones. Marie nodded, understanding in her eyes. You're a strong one, Jenny Caldwell, just like your mother. At the mention of her mother, Jenny glanced towards the far end of the restaurant. Through the kitchen window, she could see Isabella, still deep in conversation with her business associates. Her mother seemed relaxed, unaware of the drama unfolding just a few tables away. Jenny felt a pang of relief mixed with determination. She didn't want to bother her mother with this. Isabella had worked hard to build this empire, and Jenny was determined to prove she could handle whatever came her way. Taking another deep breath, Jenny smoothed down her apron and checked her reflection in a nearby polished pot. Her eyes were a bit red, but otherwise, she looked composed. She could do this. Thanks again, Marie, Jenny said, offering the older woman a genuine smile. I appreciate your support. As Jenny prepared to head back out to the dining room, she felt a mix of emotions swirling inside her. There was still hurt from Margaret's cruel words, but it was overshadowed by a growing resolve. She might be wearing an apron now, but one day she'd be running this place. And when that day came, she'd remember what it felt like to be on the receiving end of such treatment. With her head held high, Jenny pushed open the kitchen doors, ready to face whatever came next. Margaret sat at her table, sipping her wine and basking in her own self-importance. She hadn't given a second thought to her earlier interaction with Jenny. In her mind, the young waitress was just another faceless employee, unworthy of her consideration. When Jenny emerged from the kitchen carrying the corrected dish, Margaret's eyes narrowed. She saw another chance to assert her dominance. As Jenny approached the table, her steps measured and careful, Margaret spoke loudly enough for nearby tables to hear. Well, well, look who's finally learned how to do her job properly. Jenny placed the dish on the table with steady hands. Here's your corrected order, ma'am. I apologize again for the misunderstanding. Margaret sniffed disdainfully. Misunderstanding? I'd call it incompetence. But I suppose that's what happens when you hire just anyone off the street. The cruel words cut through the air, causing nearby diners to look up from their meals. Jenny felt her cheeks burn with humiliation, but she held her ground. Is there anything else I can get for you, ma'am? Jenny asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Margaret waved her hand dismissively. Oh, I'm sure you'd just mess it up again. Tell me, girl, do you even want to be here? Or is this just some kind of charity case? Jenny's eyes began to well with tears, but she blinked them back furiously. She opened her mouth to respond, but Margaret cut her off. I mean, really. In my day, we had standards. We didn't just let any old riffraff serve food to paying customers. The restaurant had grown quiet, all eyes now on Margaret and Jenny. The tension was palpable, thick enough to cut with a knife. At the far end of the restaurant, Isabella Caldwell was in the middle of an important phone call when the commotion reached her ears. She frowned, excusing herself from the conversation as she turned to see what was causing such a disturbance in her usually peaceful establishment. Isabella Caldwell made her way across the restaurant, her elegant heels clicking softly on the polished floor. As she approached Margaret's table, a hush fell over the nearby diners. Isabella's calm demeanor belied the concern in her eyes. Is everything all right here? Isabella asked, her voice steady and composed. Margaret, who had been ready to launch into another tirade about the incompetent waitress, suddenly froze. Her eyes widened as she recognized Isabella the very woman she'd been hoping to impress. Isabella, Margaret stammered, her usual confidence evaporating. I didn't expect to see you here. Isabella raised an eyebrow. This is my restaurant, Margaret. I make it a point to be present, especially when we have important guests. Margaret's cheeks flushed a deep red. She glanced nervously at Jenny, who stood quietly beside Isabella, her eyes downcast. I was just... Well, there was a small issue with the service, Margaret began, trying to regain her composure. I'm sure it's nothing you can't sort out. You know how these things can be with inexperienced staff. Isabella's expression remained neutral, but her eyes flickered with something that made Margaret's words die in her throat. Inexperienced staff? Isabella repeated softly. She turned to Jenny, placing a gentle hand on her shoulder. Margaret, I'd like you to meet Jenny Caldwell, my daughter. The silence that followed was deafening. 
Margaret's mouth opened and closed, but no words came out. She looked from Isabella to Jenny, realization dawning on her face. Jenny stood quietly, her posture straight and her chin lifted slightly. Despite her best efforts, a hint of hurt shimmered in her eyes. Your daughter, Margaret finally managed to choke out. Isabella nodded. Yes, my daughter. Jenny is learning every aspect of our business from the ground up. She insisted on starting in the kitchen and as a server to truly understand what goes into making our restaurant successful. Margaret's face paled as the full weight of her actions crashed down upon her. She had not only insulted a waitress, but had humiliated the daughter of the very woman she'd been trying to impress. I... I had no idea, Margaret whispered, her earlier arrogance completely deflated. Isabella's gaze was steady, her voice calm but firm. No, you didn't. But tell me, Margaret, would it have mattered if Jenny wasn't my daughter? Does a person's worth depend on their title or connections? Margaret found herself at a loss for words, the gravity of her actions sinking in. She looked at Jenny, seeing her in a completely different light. The young woman she had dismissed and belittled stood before her with quiet dignity, a stark contrast to Margaret's own behavior. Margaret's face flushed a deep crimson as she stumbled over her words. I... I'm so sorry, I had no idea, she stammered, her usual poise completely shattered. Isabella's gaze remained steady, her voice calm but firm. Margaret, whether Jenny is my daughter or not shouldn't matter. No one deserves to be treated the way you treated her tonight. Margaret's eyes darted between Isabella and Jenny, desperately searching for a way to salvage the situation. Of course you're absolutely right, she said, forcing a smile that didn't reach her eyes. I was just stressed about our meeting. Surely you understand the pressure of big business deals. Isabella's expression cooled even further. I understand the pressures of business quite well, Margaret. What I don't understand is how that pressure justifies treating another human being with such disrespect. The icy response left Margaret reeling. She opened her mouth to speak, but no words came out. Her usual confidence had evaporated, leaving her feelings small and exposed. I think we're done here, Isabella said her tone leaving no room for argument. She turned to Jenny, her expression softening. Sweetheart, why don't you take a break? I'll have Marie cover your tables for the rest of the evening. Jenny nodded, her composure still intact despite the hurt evident in her eyes. Thank you, Mom, she said softly, before turning and walking back towards the kitchen with her head held high. Isabella watched her daughter go, then turned back to Margaret. I'll be in touch about our potential partnership, Ms. Whitmore. Good evening. With that, she turned on her heel and walked back to her own table, leaving Margaret alone with her thoughts. Margaret sat there stunned and humiliated. The chatter of the restaurant seemed to fade into the background as the gravity of her actions sank in. She had come here tonight, so sure of herself, so certain that she would secure this deal. Now she realized with a sinking feeling, she may have ruined everything with her arrogance and cruel behavior. As she watched Isabella return to her table and Jenny disappear into the kitchen, Margaret felt a wave of shame wash over her. She had misjudged everything so badly, and now she was left to face the consequences of her actions. Margaret stumbled out of the restaurant, her mind in a fog. The cool night air hit her face, but it did little to clear her thoughts. She fumbled for her car keys, her usually steady hands shaking. As she slid into the driver's seat of her luxury car, Margaret couldn't shake the image of Jenny's hurt expression or Isabella's icy disappointment. The scene played over and over in her head like a broken record. How could I have been so blind? She whispered to herself, gripping the steering wheel tightly. Her knuckles turned white as the reality of her actions sank in. For the first time in years, Margaret felt small. Her pride, usually her armor against the world, now felt like a heavy weight dragging her down. She had always prided herself on her business acumen, her ability to read people and situations, but tonight she had misjudged everything so badly. As she drove through the city streets, her mind raced. The upcoming meeting with Isabella loomed large in her thoughts. What was supposed to be a sure thing now felt like a ticking time bomb. Would Isabella even want to do business with her after tonight? It's just a bump in the road. 
Margaret tried to convince herself. I'll apologize formally. Send a nice gift basket. It'll smooth things over. But even as the words left her mouth, they felt hollow. Deep down, Margaret knew that this wasn't something a simple, I'm sorry, could fix. Her actions had revealed a part of herself she'd never really examined before, and she didn't like what she saw. Guilt gnawed at her insides, making her feel sick to her stomach. She had always seen herself as tough but fair. Now she wondered if she had been fooling herself all along. Had she always treated people this way? Had she just never noticed before? As she pulled into her driveway, Margaret's mind was still racing. She knew she needed to make this right, but for the first time in her life, she wasn't sure how. The certainty that had always been her trademark was gone, replaced by a gnawing uncertainty that left her feeling lost and alone. The next morning, Margaret woke up with a knot in her stomach. She hadn't slept well, tossing and turning all night as the events from the restaurant played over and over in her mind. As she got ready for the day, her hands trembled slightly while applying her makeup. Margaret stared at her reflection in the mirror, barely recognizing the woman looking back at her. Gone was the usual air of confidence and poise. In its place was a nervous, uncertain version of herself she'd never seen before. With a deep breath, she smoothed down her designer suit and headed out the door. The drive to the office building felt longer than usual, each traffic light seeming to stretch on for an eternity. Margaret's mind raced with possible scenarios of how the meeting might go. I'll apologize right away, she muttered to herself, rehearsing her words. I'll tell Isabella how sorry I am for my behavior. It won't happen again. But even as she practiced her apology, Margaret knew deep down that words alone might not be enough to fix the damage she'd done. As she pulled into the parking lot of the sleek high-rise office building, Margaret's heart began to race. She took a moment to collect herself, taking deep breaths to calm her nerves. It didn't help much. Walking through the lobby, Margaret's heels clicked against the marble floor, each step echoing her anxiety. She nodded at the receptionist, trying to muster a smile but managing only a tight-lipped grimace. In the elevator, Margaret's reflection in the polished doors showed a woman she hardly recognized. Her usual confident posture was replaced by hunched shoulders and a furrowed brow. She straightened up, trying to recapture some of her old self-assurance, but it felt forced and unnatural. As the elevator doors opened on the top floor, Margaret stepped out, her legs feeling like lead. The hallway stretched before her, seeming impossibly long. At the end, she could see the frosted glass doors of the conference room where Isabella and Mr. Barnes would be waiting. Margaret paused outside the door, her hand hovering over the handle. She closed her eyes for a moment, taking one last deep breath. You can do this she whispered to herself, though the words rang hollow in her ears. With a trembling hand, Margaret pushed open the door and stepped into the conference room. Her eyes immediately sought out Isabella, dreading the icy reception she was sure to receive. Margaret stepped into the conference room, her eyes immediately scanning the faces around the table. Her heart skipped a beat when she saw Jenny seated beside Isabella and Mr. Barnes. The young woman's presence caught Margaret completely off guard, and she felt her carefully rehearsed apology crumble in her mind. Isabella stood up, her face a mask of cool professionalism. Good morning, Margaret, she said, her voice even and controlled. I believe you've already met my daughter, Jenny. Margaret's mouth went dry as she struggled to find her voice. E yes, of course, she stammered, her usual poise deserting her. Isabella continued, her tone unwavering. Jenny isn't just my daughter. She's also a rising business leader in our family's empire. She's been working her way up from the ground floor, learning every aspect of our operations. Mr. Barnes nodded approvingly, his eyes moving between Jenny and Margaret. The contrast between the two women was stark. Jenny sat tall and composed, while Margaret felt small and exposed. Margaret lowered herself into the chair, her legs feeling weak. She opened her mouth to speak, but Isabella cut her off smoothly. Isabella said, her gaze fixed on Margaret. In our line of work, treating people with respect isn't just a nicety. It's a fundamental aspect of good business. Isabella said, her gaze fixed on Margaret. In our line of work, treating people with respect isn't just a nicety. It's a fundamental aspect of good business. 
the words hung in the air, heavy with meaning. Margaret felt a flush creep up her neck as she realized the full weight of her actions from the previous night. Isabella continued, her voice firm but not unkind. Every person, regardless of their position, deserves to be treated with dignity. It's not just about being polite. It's about recognizing the value each individual brings to our success. Mr. Barnes nodded in agreement. Absolutely, he chimed in. I've always believed that how a person treats others, especially those they perceive as beneath them, speaks volumes about their character. Margaret's eyes darted between Isabella, Jenny, and Mr. Barnes. She felt exposed, her usual defenses stripped away. The gravity of her mistake hit her full force, and she realized that this meeting was about much more than just a business deal. Isabella leaned forward, her eyes fixed on Margaret. Last night's incident was more than just a misunderstanding, she said, her voice calm but firm. It was a clear demonstration of how you view and treat others. Margaret opened her mouth to protest, but Isabella held up a hand, silencing her. Mr. Barnes cleared his throat. In my years of business, I've learned that character and integrity are the cornerstones of any successful partnership, he said, his weathered face serious. How we conduct ourselves, especially in challenging moments, reveals our true nature. Margaret felt her face grow hot as she realized they were dissecting her behavior piece by piece. She wanted to defend herself, to explain, but the words wouldn't come. Isabella continued, When you belittled Jenny, you weren't just insulting a waitress. You were showing a lack of respect for every hardworking individual in our industry. Jenny sat quietly, her eyes downcast but her posture straight and dignified. Margaret couldn't help but admire the young woman's composure in the face of such a difficult situation. In our business, Isabella went on, we rely on the dedication and efforts of people at every level. From the dishwashers to the executive chefs, each person plays a crucial role in our success. Mr. Barnes nodded in agreement. Indeed, a leader who can't appreciate that isn't just unkind, they're short-sighted. Margaret felt a lump forming in her throat. She had never considered her actions in this light before. The weight of her mistake pressed down on her, making it hard to breathe. Isabella's voice softened slightly, but her words were no less impactful. Margaret, your behavior last night has cast serious doubt on whether you'd be a suitable partner for our business. We need someone who understands and values every member of our team. Mr. Barnes leaned back in his chair, his expression grave. I have to agree with Isabella. The way you conduct yourself speaks volumes about how you'd handle the pressures and responsibilities of this partnership. Margaret sat in stunned silence, the full impact of her actions crashing over her. She realized that her arrogance hadn't just cost her a potential deal. It had revealed a fundamental flaw in her character, one that could jeopardize everything she had worked for. Margaret's heart raced as she listened to Isabella and Mr. Barnes. The weight of their words crushed her usual confidence leaving her feelings small and vulnerable. She took a deep breath, trying to steady herself. I... I understand, Margaret said, her voice trembling slightly. What happened last night was inexcusable. I'd like to apologize again, not just to Jenny, but to all of you. She turned to face Jenny directly, her eyes brimming with unshed tears. Jenny, I'm truly sorry for how I treated you. You didn't deserve that, and I was wrong. Jenny nodded silently, her face a mask of professionalism. Margaret then looked at Isabella and Mr. Barnes, her desperation evident. Please, she pleaded. I know I made a terrible mistake, but I assure you it won't happen again. I've learned my lesson. Isabella's expression remained unchanged, her eyes cool and assessing. Words are easy, Margaret. Actions speak louder. Mr. Barnes cleared his throat, his weathered hands folded on the table. Perhaps, he said slowly, we should consider postponing this proposal. Margaret felt her stomach drop. Postpone? She echoed weakly. Mr. Barnes nodded. Yes, it would give you time to reflect on your actions and show us that you've truly learned from this incident. Isabella considered this for a moment before agreeing. That seems fair. We need to see real change, Margaret. Not just hear promises. 
Margaret's mind reeled. The deal she had worked so hard for, the one she had been so sure was in the bag, was slipping through her fingers. She felt a wave of devastation wash over her. How... how long? She managed to ask, her voice barely above a whisper. That depends on you, Isabella replied firmly. We'll be watching to see how you conduct yourself moving forward. Your actions will determine when, or if, we revisit this proposal. Margaret nodded numbly, the full impact of her behavior finally sinking in. She had let her arrogance and pride dictate her actions, and now she was paying the price. As she looked around the room at the faces of Isabella, Mr. Barnes, and Jenny, she realized that she had a long road ahead if she wanted to regain their trust and respect. That night, Margaret sat alone in her luxurious penthouse apartment, the city lights twinkling outside her window. The events of the day played over and over in her mind like a broken record. She couldn't shake the image of Jenny's hurt face or the disappointment in Isabella's eyes. With a heavy sigh, Margaret poured herself a glass of wine and sank into her plush armchair. For the first time in years, she felt truly alone. The silence of her empty home seemed to mock her. What have I become? She whispered to herself, her voice cracking. As she sipped her wine, Margaret's thoughts drifted to her past. She remembered the young, ambitious woman she had been when she first started her business. Back then, she had been full of dreams and determination. But somewhere along the way, that determination had twisted into something ugly. Margaret closed her eyes, recalling countless moments when she had belittled employees, dismissed concerns, and steamrolled over anyone who stood in her way. Her stomach churned with guilt. I thought I was being strong, she murmured, but I was just being cruel. Nah. She stood up and walked to her bookshelf, running her fingers along the spines of business books she had collected over the years. Titles like Ruthless Leadership and Winning at All Costs suddenly seemed hollow and misguided. Nah. Margaret pulled out an old photo album and flipped through it. Pictures of company parties and business events filled the pages, but she noticed something unsettling. In every photo, she stood alone, her employees keeping a noticeable distance. A lump formed in her throat as she realized the truth. Her success had come at a terrible price. She had built an empire, but she had no real connections, no true friendships. I can't go on like this, Margaret said softly, wiping away a tear. I need to change. She knew it wouldn't be easy. Years of habits and attitudes couldn't be undone overnight. But as she looked out at the city skyline, Margaret felt a glimmer of hope. She had built her business from nothing. Surely she could rebuild her character too. Margaret picked up her phone, hesitating for a moment before dialing a number. Hello, is this the City Volunteer Center? She asked. I'd like to sign up to help. It was a small step, but it was a start. Margaret knew she had a long way to go to regain Isabella's trust and prove she had changed. But for the first time in years, she felt like she was on the right path. The next morning, Margaret woke up with a sense of purpose. She knew what she had to do. With determination in her eyes, she sat at her desk and pulled out a pen and paper. For hours, she carefully crafted heartfelt apologies to both Jenny and Isabella. As she wrote, tears welled up in her eyes. Margaret poured her heart onto the pages, acknowledging the pain she had caused and detailing her plans to change. She wrote about her realization of how her behavior had affected others and her genuine desire to become a better person. But as Margaret finished the letters, she paused. The words on the paper seemed inadequate. She knew that a written apology, no matter how sincere, wouldn't be enough to make amends for her actions. I need to do more, she whispered to herself. With newfound resolve, Margaret decided to take a bolder step. She would go to Caldwell's Fine Dining in person to apologize face to face. The thought made her nervous, but she knew it was the right thing to do. Margaret dressed carefully, choosing a simple, modest outfit rather than her usual power suit. She wanted to appear humble and sincere. As she drove to the restaurant, her heart raced with anticipation and fear. Parking her car, Margaret took a deep breath before entering the restaurant. The familiar, elegant interior now felt intimidating. She approached the hostess, her voice trembling slightly. Excuse me, Margaret said. 
I was wondering if Jenny or Isabella Caldwell might be available. I... I need to speak with them. The hostess eyed her curiously but nodded. Let me check for you, ma'am. As she waited, Margaret's mind raced. What would she say? How would they react? She clutched her purse tightly, the apology letters tucked safely inside. Moments later, Jenny appeared from the back of the restaurant. Her eyes widened in surprise when she saw Margaret. For a moment, neither woman spoke. Ms. Whitmore, Jenny finally said, her voice calm but guarded. How can I help you? Margaret swallowed hard, her rehearsed words suddenly escaping her. Jenny, I... I came to apologize. In person. What I did was inexcusable, and I'm truly sorry. Margaret stood before Jenny, her usual confidence replaced by genuine humility. The bustling restaurant seemed to fade away as the two women faced each other. I... I know words aren't enough, Margaret began, her voice shaky. But I want you to know how deeply sorry I am for my behavior. It was inexcusable. Jenny's expression softened slightly, but she remained guarded. Thank you for coming, Ms. Whitmore. I appreciate your apology. Margaret took a deep breath. Please, call me Margaret. I... I've been doing a lot of thinking since that night. About who I am and how I've treated people. Jenny nodded, gesturing to a nearby empty table. Would you like to sit down? As they settled into their seats, Margaret felt a lump form in her throat. Jenny, I want you to know that my behavior that night, it wasn't about you. It was about me and my own insecurities. Jenny's eyebrows raised in surprise. Insecurities? I wouldn't have thought... Margaret gave a sad smile. I know. I've spent years building this image of a tough, successful businesswoman. But the truth is, I've been so focused on climbing to the top that I forgot what it means to be human. She paused, gathering her thoughts. When I saw you that night, working so humbly despite your family's success, it struck a nerve. I saw in you everything I used to be, everything I've lost touch with. Tears welled up in Margaret's eyes. My arrogance has cost me so much more than just business deals. It's cost me relationships, respect, and my own peace of mind. Jenny listened intently, her expression softening further. I've treated so many people poorly over the years, Margaret continued, her voice breaking, always thinking I was above them. But seeing you and then realizing who you were, it was like looking in a mirror and not liking what I saw. She wiped away a tear. I know I can't undo what I've done, but I want you to know that this incident has forced me to take a hard look at myself. I'm committed to changing, to being better. Jenny reached out and gently touched Margaret's hand. Thank you for sharing this with me, Margaret. It takes courage to admit when we're wrong and even more to want to change. Margaret looked up, meeting Jenny's eyes. I don't expect forgiveness, but I hope that maybe, in time, I can show you and your mother that I'm sincere about becoming a better person. Jenny sat quietly, her eyes fixed on Margaret. The older woman's vulnerability was palpable, and Jenny felt a mix of emotions stirring within her. Compassion warred with the lingering hurt from that fateful night. After a moment of thoughtful silence, Jenny spoke, her voice gentle but firm. I appreciate your honesty, Margaret. It can't have been easy to come here and open up like this. Margaret nodded, relief washing over her face. However, Jenny continued, her tone becoming more serious. I hope you understand that forgiveness isn't something that happens overnight. Trust, once broken, takes time to rebuild. Margaret's shoulders slumped slightly, but she nodded in understanding. Of course, I... I know I have a long way to go. Jenny leaned forward, her gaze intense. You're right. Words are important, but they're just the beginning. Real change is shown through actions, not words. Margaret swallowed hard, realizing the weight of the challenge before her. I understand. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make things right. A small smile tugged at the corner of Jenny's mouth. I'm glad to hear that, because I have an idea. 
If you're serious about making amends, there might be a way you can start. Margaret's eyes widened with hope. Anything. What did you have in mind? Jenny took a deep breath. Our restaurant runs a program for underprivileged youth, teaching them about the restaurant industry. We're always looking for successful business people to mentor these kids. Margaret's brow furrowed in confusion. You want me to mentor? Jenny nodded. It would be a chance for you to share your expertise while also learning to connect with people from all walks of life, to see the potential in everyone, regardless of their current circumstances. Margaret sat back considering the offer. It was clear from her expression that this was far outside her comfort zone. But after a moment, she straightened her shoulders and met Jenny's gaze. I'd be honored to help, if you'll have me. Jenny's smile grew a bit warmer. It's a start, Margaret. But remember, this is just the beginning of a long journey. You'll need to prove, day by day, that you're committed to change. Margaret nodded solemnly. I understand. And I'm ready to put in the work, no matter how long it takes. As their meeting drew to a close, Jenny stood, extending her hand to Margaret. I look forward to seeing your progress, Margaret. Remember, actions speak louder than words. Margaret took Jenny's hand, her grip firm but humbled. I won't let you down, Jenny. Thank you for this chance. Margaret threw herself into the mentorship program with a determination that surprised even herself. She arrived at the restaurant early one Saturday morning, her designer suit replaced by more casual attire. As she entered the bustling kitchen, she felt a flutter of nervousness in her stomach. Jenny greeted her with a small nod. Good morning, Margaret. Are you ready to meet the students? Margaret took a deep breath and smiled. As ready as I'll ever be. Jenny led her to a small conference room where five teenagers sat, their eyes wide with a mix of excitement and apprehension. Margaret felt her own anxiety mirrored in their faces. Everyone, this is Margaret Whitmore, Jenny introduced. She's here to share her business expertise with you. Margaret stepped forward, her usual confidence wavering. Hello, everyone. I'm looking forward to getting to know each of you. As the weeks passed, Margaret found herself immersed in a world she had never truly seen before. She learned the stories of each student, their struggles, their dreams, and their determination to succeed, despite the odds stacked against them. There was Mia, a bright-eyed girl who worked two jobs to help support her family. Margaret was moved by her unwavering optimism and work ethic. Then there was Jamal, whose quick wit and natural leadership skills reminded Margaret of herself at a younger age. To her surprise, Margaret found herself learning more than she was teaching. The students' resilience in the face of adversity humbled her. Their fresh perspectives on business problems often left her amazed. One day, as they were discussing customer service, Jamal raised his hand. Ms. Whitmore, I was thinking, maybe sometimes the best way to handle a difficult customer is to just listen to them. Really listen, you know? Margaret felt a lump form in her throat as she remembered her own behavior that fateful night. You're absolutely right, Jamal. Sometimes listening is the most powerful tool we have. As the program progressed, Margaret found herself looking forward to these sessions more than any board meeting. She began to see the world through new eyes, appreciating the strength and potential in people she might have overlooked before. One afternoon, as Margaret was helping Maria practice her presentation skills, Jenny quietly observed from the doorway. She watched as Margaret gently encouraged Maria, her face lit up with genuine care and interest. When the session ended, Jenny approached Margaret. You've really connected with them, she said softly. Margaret nodded, a warm smile on her face. They're incredible, Jenny. I came here thinking I would be the teacher, but they've taught me so much more than I could have imagined. As the weeks turned into months, Margaret's dedication to the youth mentorship program remained unwavering. She poured her heart and soul into every session, arriving early and often staying late to offer additional guidance to the students. Her transformation was evident not only in her actions, but in the way she carried herself. Gone was the haughty businesswoman, replaced by a more compassionate and attentive mentor. One afternoon, Isabella decided to pay a surprise visit to the program. As she quietly entered the conference room, she was taken aback by the scene before her. 
Margaret sat surrounded by a group of eager teenagers, her eyes bright with enthusiasm as she explained a complex business concept. The students hung on her every word, their faces alight with understanding and excitement. Isabella watched, stunned, as Margaret patiently answered questions and offered encouragement to each student. It was a side of Margaret she had never seen before, warm, nurturing, and genuinely invested in the success of others. When the session ended, Isabella approached Margaret. I must say, I'm impressed, she said, her voice tinged with a mix of surprise and admiration. Margaret turned, startled by Isabella's presence. Isabella, I didn't realize you were here. Isabella nodded, her expression softening slightly. I wanted to see for myself how things were going. I have to admit, this is not what I expected. I Margaret's face flushed with a mixture of pride and humility. These kids are incredible, she said softly. They've taught me so much more than I could ever teach them. Isabella studied Margaret for a moment, noting the genuine warmth in her eyes. For the first time, she saw that Margaret was truly serious about making amends. However, years of business experience had taught her to remain cautious. This is a commendable gesture, Margaret, Isabella said carefully. But remember, actions speak louder than words. True change takes time and consistent effort. Margaret nodded solemnly. I understand. I'm committed to this, Isabella. Not just for the business deal, but because it's the right thing to do. Later that evening, Jenny approached Margaret as she was gathering her things to leave. Mom told me she stopped by today, Jenny said, her voice neutral. Margaret looked up, meeting Jenny's gaze. She did. I hope she saw that I'm genuinely trying to change. Jenny's expression softened slightly. Your dedication to the program is appreciated, Margaret. The students speak highly of you. She paused, choosing her words carefully. But true forgiveness will come with time and proof of lasting change. This is a good start, but it's just the beginning. Margaret nodded, feeling both encouraged and humbled. I understand, Jenny. I'm here for the long haul, no matter how long it takes. These kids, this program, it's become more than just making amends. It's changed me. As the weeks turned into months, Margaret's dedication to the youth mentorship program grew stronger. She found herself looking forward to each session, eagerly anticipating the chance to work with the bright young minds she had come to admire. The transformation within her was gradual but profound. One crisp autumn afternoon, Margaret sat across from Jaden, a shy teenager who had been struggling with self-confidence. She leaned in, her voice gentle and encouraging. Jaden, I've seen your business proposal. It's brilliant. You have a real talent for this. Jaden's eyes widened, a glimmer of hope shining through. Really? You think so? Margaret nodded, her smile warm and genuine. Absolutely. With a little fine-tuning, this could be something special. As she watched Jaden's face light up with newfound confidence, Margaret felt a warmth spread through her chest. It was a feeling she had never experienced in all her years of cutthroat business deals and power plays. This, she realized, was true fulfillment. Later that week, Margaret found herself in a board meeting for her company. As her colleagues discussed aggressive tactics to outmaneuver a competitor, Margaret felt a sense of unease. She raised her hand, surprising everyone with her next words. What if instead of trying to crush them, we reach out and propose a collaboration? We could create more jobs and better serve our community. The room fell silent, her fellow board members staring at her in disbelief. Margaret held her ground, her voice steady and clear. I've learned recently that true success isn't about having the most power or money. It's about lifting others up alongside us. As she left the meeting, Margaret felt lighter than she had in years. She realized that her experiences with the youth program weren't just changing how she approached mentoring. They were transforming her entire worldview. Over the next few months, Margaret threw herself into volunteer work. She expanded her efforts beyond the youth program, getting involved in local food banks and community outreach programs. With each passing day, she found herself becoming more attuned to the needs of others, more willing to listen and offer help without expecting anything in return. One day, as Margaret was serving meals at a homeless shelter, she locked eyes with a familiar face. 
It was Marie, the restaurant staff member who had offered to step in for Jenny that fateful night. Marie looked at Margaret with surprise, clearly not expecting to see the once haughty businesswoman ladling out soup with a warm smile. Mrs. Whitmore, Marie asked hesitantly. Margaret's smile widened. Hello, Marie, it's good to see you. Would you like some soup? As they talked, Margaret felt a sense of peace wash over her. She realized that the person she used to be, the arrogant, self-centered businesswoman, was fading away, replaced by someone she was finally proud to be. As news of Margaret's volunteer work spread through the community, it eventually reached other businessmen's ears. Margaret sat at a table surrounded by eager young faces, her eyes bright with enthusiasm as she explained a complex business concept. Her voice was gentle, patient, and encouraging, a far cry from the harsh tones Jenny remembered. Remember, Margaret was saying, success isn't just about making money, it's about making a difference in people's lives. Jenny felt a lump form in her throat. The change in Margaret was palpable, and it seemed genuine. As word of Margaret's transformation spread, other business leaders took notice. At a charity gala, Jenny overheard a conversation between two prominent CEOs. Have you seen Margaret Whitmore lately? One asked. She's like a different person. The other nodded. I heard she turned down a lucrative deal because it would have put local jobs at risk. Can you believe it? Jenny listened, her heart softening. It seemed Margaret's change wasn't just for show. It was affecting her business decisions, too. Over the next few weeks, Jenny found herself paying more attention to news about Margaret. She read about Margaret's company launching a scholarship program for underprivileged students. She saw pictures of Margaret at community events, her smile warm and sincere as she engaged with people from all walks of life. One day, as Jenny was leaving her family's restaurant, she spotted Margaret across the street. Margaret was helping an elderly woman with her groceries, chatting and laughing as if she had all the time in the world. The sight made Jenny pause. For the first time since that fateful night, Jenny allowed herself to truly believe that Margaret had changed. The arrogant, condescending woman who had humiliated her seemed to have vanished, replaced by someone kind, humble, and genuinely caring. As Jenny watched Margaret wave goodbye to the elderly woman, she felt a weight lift from her heart. While she wasn't ready to completely let go of her caution, she found herself open to the possibility of forgiveness. Jenny and Isabella arrived at the Grand Ballroom, their eyes scanning the crowd of well-dressed business leaders. The charity gala was in full swing, with soft music playing and the gentle clink of champagne glasses filling the air. As they made their way through the crowd, Jenny spotted a familiar face. Mom, she whispered, nudging Isabella gently. Isn't that Margaret Whitmore? Isabella followed her daughter's gaze, her eyebrows raising slightly in surprise. There, across the room, stood Margaret. But she wasn't the same woman they remembered from that fateful night at the restaurant. This Margaret was smiling warmly, engaged in what seemed to be a heartfelt conversation with a group of young entrepreneurs. Let's go say hello, Isabella suggested, her voice carrying a hint of curiosity. As they approached, Margaret turned, her eyes widening in recognition. For a moment, she seemed unsure, but then a genuine smile spread across her face. Isabella, Jenny, she greeted them warmly. It's wonderful to see you both. The three women fell into conversation, discussing their various charitable endeavors. Margaret spoke passionately about her mentorship program and the scholarship initiative her company had recently launched. I never realized how fulfilling it could be to give back, Margaret admitted, her voice soft with emotion. These young people have taught me so much. Isabella nodded, a look of approval in her eyes. It's amazing what we can learn when we open our hearts to others, she said. As the evening wore on, Isabella found herself genuinely enjoying Margaret's company. The arrogance that had once defined the woman seemed to have melted away replaced by a humble eagerness to make a difference. As the gala came to a close, Isabella made a decision. Margaret, she said, why don't you join us at the restaurant tomorrow evening? I'd love to continue our conversation in a more relaxed setting. Margaret's eyes lit up. I'd be honored, she replied, her voice filled with genuine gratitude. 
The following evening, Margaret arrived at Caldwell's fine dining, her heart fluttering with nervous anticipation. As she was led to a private dining room, she was surprised to see not only Isabella and Jenny, but also Mr. Barnes, the influential investor from their previous meeting. Mr. Barnes, Margaret greeted him, trying to keep her voice steady. I wasn't expecting to see you here. Mr. Barnes smiled warmly, extending his hand. Margaret, it's good to see you. I've been hearing some interesting things about you lately. As they settled into their seats, Isabella explained, Mr. Barnes has been following your recent activities with great interest, Margaret. We thought it might be good for all of us to have a chat. Mr. Barnes nodded, his eyes twinkling. Indeed. Margaret, I must say I'm impressed by the changes you've made. Your work with underprivileged youth and your new approach to business ethics haven't gone unnoticed. Margaret felt a lump forming in her throat. Thank you, she said softly. It's been a journey of self-discovery, to say the least. Mr. Barnes leaned forward, his expression serious but kind. In light of everything we've seen and heard, I believe it's time we reconsidered our partnership. Your actions have shown a level of integrity and compassion that aligns perfectly with what we look for in a business partner. As the evening progressed, the conversation flowed easily between Margaret, Mr. Barnes, and Isabella. The three of them discussed the potential partnership, their voices filled with enthusiasm and hope. Margaret couldn't help but feel a wave of gratitude wash over her. I can't thank you enough for this second chance, she said, her voice thick with emotion. I know I didn't deserve it after my behavior, but I promise you won't regret this decision. Mr. Barnes nodded, a warm smile on his face. Margaret, the changes we've seen in you are truly remarkable. Your dedication to helping others and your newfound humility have shown us that you're exactly the kind of partner we want to work with. Isabella chimed in, her eyes twinkling. It's not often we see such a profound transformation in someone. You've proven that it's never too late to change and grow. As they finished their meal, laughter and warmth filled the air. The tension that had once existed between them had melted away, replaced by a sense of mutual respect and understanding. After dinner, Margaret excused herself and made her way towards the kitchen. She found Jenny there, busy helping the staff clean up after the busy evening. Jenny? Margaret called out softly. Jenny looked up, surprise flickering across her face. Mrs. Margaret, is everything all right? Margaret stepped closer, her hands clasped nervously in front of her. Everything's wonderful thanks to you, she said. I wanted to thank you, Jenny. You opened my eyes to my own prejudices and showed me the importance of kindness. Jenny's expression softened. I appreciate that, Mrs. Margaret, but you did the hard work yourself. Margaret shook her head. No, it was you. Your grace under pressure, your kindness even when I was cruel. It made me see the world differently. You showed me that true strength lies in compassion, not in power or wealth. Tears welled up in Jenny's eyes as she listened to Margaret's heartfelt words. I'm glad I could help, she said softly. And I'm proud of the changes you've made, Margaret. You've come a long way. Margaret reached out and gently squeezed Jenny's hand. Thank you for giving me the chance to see the kindness in everyone. You've changed my life, Jenny, and I'll never forget that. As the warm afternoon sun filtered through the windows of Isabella's elegant office, Margaret, Isabella, and Jenny sat around a polished oak table, the air buzzing with excitement and possibility. Months had passed since their partnership began, and the results were nothing short of remarkable. Margaret took a sip of her coffee, her eyes sparkling with enthusiasm. Isabella, I can't believe how well everything's going. Our latest venture in Chicago exceeded all expectations. Isabella nodded, a satisfied smile playing on her lips. It's been incredible, Margaret. Your business acumen combined with our restaurant expertise has created something truly special. Jenny, seated beside her mother, leaned forward, her face alight with eagerness. I've been thinking about our next move, she said, her voice filled with confidence. What if we looked into expanding to the West Coast? Margaret and Isabella exchanged impressed glances. That's an interesting idea, Jenny, Margaret said warmly. What made you think of that? 
Jenny's eyes lit up as she explained, I've been researching the market there, and I think there's a real opportunity for our unique blend of fine dining and community engagement. Isabella beamed with pride at her daughter's initiative. That's excellent thinking, Jenny. Why don't you walk us through your ideas? As Jenny began to outline her proposal, Margaret found herself marveling at how far they'd all come. The young woman she had once dismissed was now a valued colleague, offering fresh perspectives that kept their business on the cutting edge. I was thinking we could start in San Francisco, Jenny continued, her voice filled with excitement. It's a city that values innovation and social responsibility. Two things our partnership has become known for. Margaret nodded thoughtfully. That's brilliant, Jenny. And we could use our mentorship program to connect with local culinary schools there, just like we've done here. Isabella chimed in. We could also partner with local farmers and sustainable food sources. It would be a perfect fit for the Bay Area's eco-conscious culture. As they continued to discuss the potential expansion, the energy in the room was palpable. Ideas flowed freely, each woman building on the other's suggestions with enthusiasm and respect. Margaret couldn't help but feel a wave of gratitude wash over her. She looked at Isabella and Jenny, two women who had given her a second chance and helped her become a better person and businesswoman. The partnership had not only been good for business, but it had also enriched their lives in ways none of them could have imagined. As the years passed, Margaret's transformation continued to inspire those around her. She had become a fixture at Caldwell's Fine Dining, not as a powerful businesswoman looking to make a deal, but as a cherished friend and mentor. The restaurant's warm, inviting atmosphere now felt like a second home to her. One sunny afternoon, Margaret pushed open the familiar glass doors of the restaurant, greeted by the gentle tinkling of bells. The aroma of freshly baked bread and simmering sauces filled the air, making her smile. Margaret, Jenny's voice rang out from across the dining room. She hurried over, her face beaming with genuine delight. I'm so glad you could make it today. Margaret embraced Jenny warmly. I wouldn't miss it for the world, dear. How are the new apprentices doing? Jenny's eyes lit up. They're amazing. Your mentorship program has really made a difference. Come, let me introduce you to them. As they walked through the bustling kitchen, Margaret noticed the respect and admiration in the eyes of the staff. It was a far cry from the fear and resentment she once inspired in her employees. In the back of the kitchen, a group of young, eager faces turned to greet them. Margaret's heart swelled with pride as she saw the determination in their eyes. Everyone, Jenny announced, this is Margaret Whitmore. She's the reason many of you are here today. A young woman with curly hair stepped forward, her eyes shining. Ms. Whitmore, I can't thank you enough for this opportunity. Your program changed my life. Margaret felt tears prick her eyes. Oh, sweetheart, she said, her voice thick with emotion. You're the one doing all the hard work. I'm just happy to help open doors. As she spent time with the apprentices, sharing stories and offering advice, Margaret realized how much joy this brought her. The sense of fulfillment she felt now was far greater than any business deal had ever given her. Later, as Margaret sat at her usual table, Isabella joined her with a steaming cup of coffee. You know, Isabella said a twinkle in her eye, I never thought I'd say this, but I'm glad you were rude to my daughter that day. Margaret chuckled, shaking her head. I'm not proud of it, but I'm grateful for where it led me. You both taught me so much about humility and the true meaning of success. Isabella reached across the table, squeezing Margaret's hand. And you've taught us about the power of redemption. Look at all the lives you've touched, Margaret. That's a legacy to be proud of. As they sat there, watching the bustling restaurant filled with happy customers and dedicated staff, Margaret felt a deep sense of peace. She had found her true calling, not in building empires, but in building people up. If you enjoyed the story of Margaret, Jenny, and Isabella, I handpicked this next story that will touch your heart. Please don't miss this one. Click here to watch it.